Welcome, I'm Camden Hoke, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for this Yin Yoga mini retreat today. What I want to suggest is that you make sure that your cell phone is turned off, that you have a very quiet space to practice, that uh, you have the doors closed and you won't be disturbed, that you can take this time for you to replenish and renew and recharge. And I am so excited to be here today with this lovely community of yogis. Uh, we have Nina here today who's going to be joining us, and June, and we have Helen, and we have Mike. And you will see that they will be in some different modifications of the poses as we dive into our practice. And you can choose which modification is going to be right for you within each pose. Make sure that you have a dense bolster. You'll see here the black bolsters here, or a very dense pillow. Make sure that you have maybe a couple of blankets with you and you can have your yoga mat or just a space carved out for yourself so that you have room around you. And it doesn't take a lot of room, but just room around you to be able to uh, practice uh, comfortably with us today. We're gonna go ahead and dive right in and we're gonna start by setting an intention. So I'll ask you to sit in a comfortable position. Go ahead and close your eyes. And you can have your, your palms down if you're feeling this need for a grounding today and drawing inward. Or you might have your palms up just as a symbol of receiving and openness. So choose what feels right for you. As you're breathing naturally in and out of your nose, just connect with the in-breath and the pause and the out-breath and the pause. And make a pact right now to let your breath be your guide through the practice today. And set your intention for your practice today. Whether you've come here with an energy that is about surrender and letting go, whether you've come here to replenish and to refill as you do so many things in your life and you're needing to recharge your batteries. And also you may have come here to replenish yourself but also really serve and share this deepened focus with others in your life and in the community. We'll take the palms together in a prayer position, Anjali Mudra, this mudra of offering, and we offer up this intention. And we offer up a joint intention here as well for this sense of inner peace and listening from within. And we'll join the practice this morning with a single ohm. Um, let's take a nice big breath in, exhale it out. And an inhale. Ah. Releasing your hands and opening your eyes. Our first posture is going to be a butterfly pose. And butterfly pose, you can do two different ways. We'll have a seated butterfly pose where you can sit with your legs out in front of you, taking the soles of your feet together. You'll take your hands to your shins and your arms would be straight here. And then you'll come forward in your yin posture with a rounded spine. Now you can use a bolster or a prop and you'll see as uh, our beautiful yogis today have the different uh, shapes that they'll be taking during the practice. And this is one option. The other option will be a supine butterfly pose. So it's lying down with the same shape, arms out to the side, and uh, just eyes closed. So let's go ahead and come into the shape that suits you best here. And then I'll talk a little bit more about yin as we dive in. So just starting to take the shape 
And if you're in the seated posture, you start to come forward as you approach your edges. Focusing on your breath, just like we did in the beginning, opening of the practice. You follow the inhale till its completion. You recognize the pause. You follow the exhale and you recognize the pause. Now yin yoga is different than an active practice. In this practice here, we are letting go of any muscular activity. We're surrendering and completely relaxing into the shape, really into the support that you have, the earth. And you want to come into the posture, find this position, and be there with stillness. So that doesn't mean you're not going to move, because as your body opens, you may deepen the pose and respond to the body's invitation to move. That's a movement with intelligent action. Otherwise, you remain still and let the body just continue to open, releasing any tension in the jaw, softening the backs of the eyes, relaxing the shoulders completely. So with that stillness then, we become still like a mountain. And in that stillness, we become the witness. Watching our thoughts as if they were credits on a movie screen. Listening to the sound of our breath moving in and out of the nose. Feeling the response of the body as it starts to let go and receive an open quality. And yes, one of the key words here is practice. Because think about it, anything that you've ever done well in your life, you've practiced. And it took surrender and it took letting go. So when you see the mind wandering here or becoming entangled in thoughts, you very gently and without judgment draw yourself back to the attention of the breath. Moving into the subtleties of scanning your body with your breath. Relaxing the hips. Filling the spaces in between each vertebra. Breathing up into the heart space, into the center of the chest. And then being very connected with your intention here. So that every breath guides you and is infused with your intention. Poses are held generally anywhere from three to 20 minutes. And for this mini retreat, our postures will be held for five minutes. And if you need to come out at any time, you would simply come out and move into a position that would allow you some relief 
might be lying on your back. But the question to ask yourself is, can I stay with the sensations that are presented here? Can I just be in the moment? Now, as we've been here for five minutes, we've gradually let the body release and let go and soften moving more of the feminine qualities in this yin practice. So in order to lift up out of the posture, if you're lying down, you'll bring your hands to your outer thighs and slowly bring the legs back in together so that you ground the soles of the feet. You can roll over to one side. And then if you're forward, You'll press into your hands and ride the inhale to a seated posture. And then you can bring your hands to your outer thighs and draw them up together. So make sure that when you come out of the posture, you allow yourself a few moments in a pose or a transitional space to feel the nourishment that you received from that previous pose. Our next pose is gonna be Sphinx or Seal. And we're gonna show you how you can also do a combination. So our Sphinx pose will have you come onto your forearms. So if you know you're coming into Sphinx, you're gonna lie on your belly and come onto your forearms. Your pubic bone stays grounded. The thighs are grounded. Relax your tush. It can tend to tighten up a little bit here, so relax the tush. And some of you might want to take this a little bit further. This is a passive back bend. And if you want to take this a little deeper, what we're going to actually offer you is also seal. And seal has you coming up, and June is going to show you what seal looks like. You're going to actually turn the hands out and away from you, slightly moving them forward, press into the hands, the heels of the hands press forward, and you'll lift up. So there'll be five minute hold here. For those of you that want to go back and forth for seal to sphinx, I'll give the notification every minute. Some of you may want to stay in sphinx only or seal only, and you can do that as well. Now, a question that I get quite often is, what do I do with my head? Can I put it down? Do I need to keep my eyes forward? The thing about your focus for your eyes is you want to have a drishti, which is a point of gaze or focus. So whether your head is slightly lifted, you're going to find a point of gaze and just keep your eyes focused there. That's an external drishti. You can also gaze inward by having the eyes closed and you might gaze to the heart center, to the heart space. And just continue to stay focused in the moment by your breath or what we'll introduce now is a mantra. And you could use a word or a phrase to uh, kind of keep you uh, grounded or anchored in the moment. So it could be peace or surrender or I embrace love, whatever that might be for you. If you're alternating, we'll come down to Sphinx now or seal wherever you started, staying with your breath. One of my favorite spiritual teachers is Mr. B.K.S. Iyengar. And I'd like to share a quote with you from him right now. He says, yoga allows you to rediscover a sense of wholeness in your life when you don't feel like you're constantly trying to fit broken pieces together. So for me, I know that when I started yoga over gosh, 16, 17 years ago, the actual practice of asana, the physical practice here of postures of both yin and an active practice brought me back into my body. I had had some issues when I was younger, um, growing up with um, 
dysfunction in our home and I just would leave my body just to escape as a defense mechanism. And when I started yoga, uh, it was into my 30s, it gave me this opportunity to come back into grounding. And so as my spiritual practice, it's offered me a lot of wisdom on my path. Now if you're coming and you're switching out again, come back into either Sphil, Seal, or Sphinx. So this practice can really offer you a grounding in your life, an opportunity to see things as they are and to then go from that space and make choices into what you know you are meant here to become. See if you can relax your jaw and your tongue. So let your mind's eye travel to the root of the tongue. Relax that space and the sides of the tongue. Soften around the eyes and the forehead. Check in with your legs, and your feet even. And we're switching it up for the last minute here. If you've been alternating, you can come into either your seal or your sphinx. And again, as we've talked about, if the mind has been wandering, just bring yourself back to that single pointed focus of your drishti, whether it be outside of you at a single point or inside on that inner landscape. Your last few breaths, see if you have anything that you need to let go of here. Anything that you might have brought to your mat, to the space that is no longer serving for love in your life, that has had a hold on you, and that you're now ready to say goodbye to. Let these last three breaths carry that out of you and away from you so it transcends out for good. And go ahead and slowly lower down. You can bring your hands out in front of you and place them on top of each other and place your forehead on your hands. Or you could turn your head to one side if that's comfortable on your neck. Just lengthen your neck so that the ear is flat. And I'll make sure that you have equal time for the other side as well. Now I think this is a really beautiful place to tap into the nourishment, the energy, that you might feel flowing now um, around the area of the tailbone. Because this is the area that was pressurized in that pose for that length of time. So see if you can tap into that flow of energy, fresh blood coming into that space, maybe spaces that were tight or even blocked off before. Now, if your head is turned to one side, go ahead and turn it to the other side, nice and slow. Again, see how much you can let go relaxing every part of your physical body. As you connect with your breath, noticing any shifts of the mood of the mind, the settling of the thoughts perhaps. And then slowly bringing your head back to center 
And we'll shift into our next posture, which is child's pose. So you'll place your hands beside your chest, and then you'll shift back towards your knees. You might move up so that your knees are on your blanket. Place your big toes together. Now, you can do this several ways. You can have a wider knee child's pose, which is gonna work a little deeper into the groin area. Now, here's the key. We don't wanna go past our edge, right? Yin is about edges, but we don't wanna jump over the edge. We just wanna bump up right against it. So find the perfect place for you where you just feel an edge. Now, you can come completely forward, or if you have your bolster or your dense pillow, you can take that between your inner thighs and lie on the bolster. Now this is really supportive for anybody who might have some tenderness in your low back, or you know what, maybe you just need that extra love and cushion, right? <laughs> you've really been active, you've been doing a lot, and you just feel that you need that letting go and that soft, cushy pillow or bolster. Now here's a welcome pose for five minutes, right? Now in this yin, we want to let go of everything. So the hands relax. And sometimes what's really interesting, when, when I know I do this practice, and I've had um, students even share with me like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I was you know, holding my palms so rigidly. Or I didn't know that I gripped my toes. So what I encourage you to do here is think of your breath as a magic wand. And every time you breathe, you're going to check in with a specific area of your body. So you might start at your feet and then trace up your legs, your torso, your arms, and just check in and see, wow, you know what? I know there are certain areas I hold, but I had no idea that I kind of held in that area. So use that magic wand of the breath and go on a little exploration. I mentioned that this practice is about edges. And first, of course, as you may be feeling or have felt, there is a physical edge. In yin, it's a little bit different than restorative because we actually take our bodies to a shape that pushes the edge a bit physically. We feel the body say, oh, that's it. And then we come and we breathe and the body starts to open and let go. Then also there might be an emotional edge. So we might feel certain emotions. Uh, it could be uh, sometimes laughter pops out, sometimes tears pop out as you're in a posture. Things that we may have pushed down, say when we're in a meeting or we have something going on, it doesn't feel like the appropriate place to share or come out with something. We might stuff it down and it might come out as you practice, which is a wonderful thing, right? We want to let those feelings up and acknowledge them. They're actually talking to us. And then the other edge that might happen is the thoughts, right? Our mind has a plethora of thoughts every single day. And we can get so much in our head that when we come to this practice of surrender, we actually are able to focus the mind. And that is so key in being able to be completely present in our relationships in our life, in the things that we decide to, to take on in our life that we love, whether it's painting, whether it's writing, whether it's working with people, whether it's teaching, whatever that might be. We want to bring a complete focus. And how we do that is by having a daily spiritual practice. So let yourself sink in, hearing the sounds of the bells, letting them really guide you deeper inside yourself and to the rhythm of your breath. The Buddha said, so the breath, so the mind, so the heart. So continue.
continue with noticing your breath. Mood of the mind. The pulse of your heart. See if you can surrender and really see what's true for you. Let your hips get a little heavier. Let your belly soften with gravity. And let these last three breaths in the posture carry an intentional release. Again, a surrender Maybe it's a belief. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a habit that no longer serves love in your life or for greater good. You can maybe see the words or whatever that represents, that belief, that, that thing, that experience, whatever that is. See it actually leaving through the breath. So every time you exhale, release it. And every time you inhale, let that space be nourished by the breath of life. Now if your head is turned to the side, very slowly bring it back to center. Again, you're moving on the breath. On an inhale, you press into your hands and begin to lift yourself up, just moving your prop to the side. Now, by about this time, most people are sinking in. So just a quick check-in. Are we sinking in now? Yes? <laughs> are you sinking in now too? <laughs> so you're starting to sink in a little bit now. So what I encourage you to do is tune in even more from the inside out, right? Really listening from the inside so that intuition and breath are really your companions always. So there's a deep listening, not just with our ears, but a deep listening with our heart, with our skin, with our eyes, um, with every part, even through your pores. There's this incredible um, feeling tone of being able to listen. So as we move into the next posture, which is called dragonfly, I'll ask you just to kind of amp up the listening a little bit. So we'll give you some different options for this and you'll see uh, these beautiful yogis sharing different options for the posture. So you're gonna actually take your legs wide and remember the key here is not to go past your edge. So you know what, some people are like, I'm not flexible, I can't do yoga. Yes, you can, all right, right? It's not about being flexible. It's more about being flexible in your mind than it is in your body. That's what yoga is really about a big part of it. So wherever, whatever uh, width you need to have your legs. Now, if you say, you know what, I just, this isn't possible for me, I'm gonna ask you to bend your knees. You can have your legs here, and you might have your pillow or bolster here for yourself, okay? That might be good for you, especially if you have really tight hamstrings, if you're a runner, um, it just uh, aren't able to take the legs wide. So also a big thing is if you sit back and you have that curve of your lower back, the lumbar spine, you wanna sit up on some kind of cushion that's gonna allow your pelvis to roll forward so the pubic bone rolls down, okay? And then remember, we really uh, carefully and mindfully approach the edge. So we'll come forward with a rounded spine when your body invites you. And so you'll see our beautiful yogis here will have props. You can use your props as you need to to support you. So you might have a bolster on your head here. You might have a bolster for your forearms. So let your body guide you through the edges. And remember, you're gonna have that rounded spine here. This is different than our active practice. Your breath is with you. If you have your mantra, 
And then we come to that place of stillness. You're right at an edge and you breathe. You stay present. You choose to be in the moment. And then secondly, you are the witness. So we watch and listen for any physical sensations, any emotional uprisings or uh, information and uh, the fluctuations of the mind. We notice if it feels calm like a lake or if at times when we're uncomfortable it might get a bit choppy, you know, when it's windy outside and you can look and there's white caps. This practice is about staying present, being willing to be here right now with whatever. And it is a uh, reflection of our life as well. We can look at where in our life it feels uncomfortable to be sometimes. And can we, can we just be there? Can we choose to stay there and, and gain wisdom from that place of discomfort? That's where the, the growth and the, the real learning can be. We can really listen to our intuition So you have your tools, your magic wand of the breath, noticing places you're holding, where you can surrender, the sound of the bells, the vibration to draw you deeper into what's present inside. And this beautiful practice of cultivating a sense of self-love, inner peace, compassion, mindfulness, Mr. Iyengar said, the study of asana is not about mastering posture. So doing these poses today is not about mastering the shape that you're in, but it's about using posture to understand and transform yourself. How can this aspect of yoga, our asana practice, bring us deeper into ourselves so that we transform from within. Because as we do that, that is how we notice and that is how external change happens in our life, in our family, in our community, and in the world. We all know what Gandhi said was, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I sometimes think that we can say the words, but what does it really mean? That what we want to see outside, we first have to transform inside. just as you came into the posture, so beautifully, gracefully, respectfully, and intentionally, take an inhale, and from wherever you are, slowly begin to lift yourself out of the posture. 
And just take a moment just to sit. And you can move your props if you're ready to move them. Bring your legs a little closer together. And just a little check-in to see how this nourishment is moving or connecting you or if there's a sense of wholeness or renewal. Or sometimes even it may feel like a breaking apart in order to put back together. And then we're going to have you slowly shift onto your back. So we'll have you put your heads in the center. And then make sure you have your bolster over to one side of you. And as you come back to lay on your back, you can put your legs either flat or you can have, if your back feels tender, bend your knees, ground the soles of the feet, and your inner knees can come in toward each other. Your eyes can be open or closed. We'll just take this moment here before we move into our twist just to check in. See what this practice has cultivated within you. So instead of looking outside right now for answers, we're looking inside just to be present and just to notice. We'll have you take your right leg, hug it up into your chest. Mm -hmm. Place your right sole of your foot on your left thigh. And you're going to come into a twist by taking your left hand on your right leg and drawing that across your body. Right arm out to the side, palm faces up. Now you've got your bolster or your dense pillow. You can place it under your knee. And what's kind of nice is that you draw it snugly toward you so that it's from the knee and now you can bring your foot all the way on top of the bolster as well if you like. Yeah, deep breaths here. Now again, eyes can be opened or closed. Feeling the movement, especially around the torso as you breathe, the upper back, the upper chest. Yoga doesn't change the way we see things. It transforms the person who sees. So there's a lot of behind the scenes going on that you don't even have to really know about right now. It's part of the mystery of life. You witness the layers as you unpeel them, as you're ready, as, as they become more conscious to you. Then you make choices from that place of right action. Become aware of your breath. And very slowly begin to lift the leg back up, bringing your back to the mat. Take a moment to center here. And then hugging your left knee up into your chest, relaxing that foot. You might move your prop to the other side so you have it for the twist. And then you'll place the sole of your left foot on your right thigh. And then gradually guide your left leg over to your right side. Draw that left arm out to the side. And as you angle the palm and the armpit up, you'll flatten the shoulder blade on the back, on the ground. Relaxing jaw and head, letting the head be heavy, letting the eyeballs fall back into the sockets. 
Relaxing the lips, the cheeks. And just resting in the pureness and quality of the in-breath, pause, the exhale, and the pause, and repeating the cycle. can't be rushed. We know the yin and the yang. The yang, more masculine, it's about action. It's about heat and fire. And the yin is about the feminine, the receptivity. It's about the cold. It's about the darkness. And in this practice, as we have the longer passive holds, we work with the yin tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, the fascia, so that there's a pliability about them. So that in our active lives, we feel wholly supported with masculine and feminine energy. In our whole life, we feel complete. Aware of your breath, draw the leg back up to the center, lying flat on your back, preparing for final relaxation, Shavasana, corpse pose. So if you have a pillow, you might want something underneath your knees. If you have a blanket, you might want to cover or you can come to lying flat with your arms slightly out to the side, the palms up drawing the chin in just slightly, lengthening the crown. And so this is a wakeful slumber. We let go of any control of the breath. We maintain awareness of the breath. Awareness of ourselves in this space but we allow this to be a, a shedding of our skin. This literally is the, the death of the practice, the end. So we absorb the benefits through every cell. We absorb the benefits of this practice, all its mystery all of its awareness. All its wisdom. And we let go of what no longer serves. Becoming aware of your breath. Start to draw in deeper breaths so that you feel 
the expansion of the belly and then the ribs and then through the upper chest and upper back and then releasing the breath through the same pathway belly ribs chest so that you feel yourself filling every space with this breath of life of renewal of recharge of reigniting the mission that you have in your heart the essence your spark Now letting the breath inspire small movements as you just start to move fingers and your little toes and the circling of wrists and ankles. And then maybe the arms carefully raise above you or behind you, just watching out for anything that may be behind you. And hugging your knees up into your chest. You might do a little rock side to side or circle to massage the lower back. And then we'll roll to your right side. You can create a pillow with your arm by bringing your right hand to the base of your neck laying your head and your arm. And then slowly pressing into your left palm and bringing yourself up to a seated posture, finding your bolster to sit on, a blanket, making sure your hips are a little higher than your knees or maybe a lot higher if you're very tight through the hips. We'll bring our hands to Anjali Mudra, to that Mudra of Offering. Coming into that space of gratitude, I'd like you to think of an experience that you've had that brought you great joy, whether you were through a particular person or maybe it was a, just a moment that you had of a memory or recognition Maybe it's something that you love doing. To see if you can let that permeate through every cell, that feeling of joy and fulfillment and wholeness. And let this be a ripple out to others as you leave your mat, because your practice doesn't end on your mat. It actually moves out in your life with you, into your life practice. So every smile that you share, every word, every task that you complete, everything that you choose in your life is infused with that joy and fulfillment and wisdom and insights. So I share much gratitude to my teachers and all of the teachers on our path for their insights and their wisdom and for this community here of sharing and for you being dedicated to join us in this mini retreat for yin yoga and the dedication that you have for transformation in your life may all beings be happy May all beings be healthy. May all beings know love. And may all beings be free from suffering. Let's take an inhale for Om. Ah.